today we're going to take a look at mixed expressions. Here we have a mixed number, which is a whole number with a fraction, five and a half. Here we have a mixed expression, which is a whole number or variable added to a fraction. So here we have the whole number three being added to the algebraic fraction x minus two over five. So let's take a look at how we can um, rewrite these as a single fraction. Um, you might say, well, this is already a single fraction, five and a half, but really five and a half is five plus a half. And if we want to write, rewrite this as a single fraction, we need to have a common denominator here of two. So we're going to rewrite 5 over 1 as 10 over 2. And now we can actually add 10 over 2 with the 1 over 2, and we get 11 over 2. This 11 over 2, since the numerator is bigger than the denominator, is often referred to as an improper fraction. Um, an easier way to actually change from a mixed number to an improper fraction would be to actually just multiply the whole number times the denominator, so 5 times 2 gives you 10, and add the numerator, and that would actually give you the 11 for your numerator in your improper fraction. So quick, uh, another example like that, let's say we have 3 and uh, 2 thirds, uh, 3 times 3 would give you 9, and then 9 plus 2 would give you 11, so the mixed number 3 and 2 thirds can be thought of as the improper fraction 11 thirds. Let's take a look at some algebraic examples. Um, here we have c plus 4 over c. I'm going to think of this c as c over 1, and our common denominator is then c. So in order to have this val uh, variable c have a denominator of c, I need to multiply by c over c. So here we have c times c, which is c squared. c times 1 is c. And in my numerator, or my other fraction here is just 4 over c. I don't have to actually change this one because it already has the common denominator. So now we can actually add these two fractions together. So we'll do that. And when we do that, our numerator is c squared plus 4. And our denominator is c. Fairly straightforward. Let's take a look at another example. Um, this one, um, we need to once again think of this 7 as being 7 over... 1, and our common denominator is going to be x plus 5. So I'm going to multiply by x plus 5 to both the numerator and denominator here. And that's going to give us 7 times x plus 5 in the numerator of the first fraction, with our denominator being x plus 5. And our second fraction we don't have to change. Now in our second fraction, we're going to have to be careful here in a minute, and I'll explain why. Um, we have a negative sign here. We need to make sure we subtract both terms in the numerator when we combine these. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to distribute in the numerator of the first fraction. So I have 7x plus 35 over x plus 5. And now I'm going to actually combine my fractions. I'm going to take the first fraction and subtract the second fraction. So being careful with the negative sign here, I'd have 7x minus x, which would give me 6x. And then I have 35 minus a negative 6, which is actually going to give me a positive 41. And then my denominator just stays x plus 5. Now sometimes you might be able to pull out a common factor in the numerator, and that might actually cancel with a factor in the denominator. So in other words, you might be able to reduce your fraction. So just be aware of that. That's a possibility. And let's take a look at this last example. Once again, we're going to think of this as 7 over 1. And our least common denominator is going to be x minus 3. So I'm going to multiply the 7 over 1 times x minus 3 over x minus 3. And the reason we can do this is because multiplying by a number divided by itself, well, a number divided by itself is 1. So really, we're multiplying by a form of 1. We're just rewriting this in a slightly different form when we uh, rewrite a fraction with a different denominator. So here we have 7 times the quantity x minus 3. And the first fraction, notice, didn't have to change because it already had our common denominator of x minus 3. And now I'm going to distribute in that second fraction, I'm going to distribute the 7, uh, 
plus sign here. So we have 7 times, let me try that again. We'd have 7 times x, which would give us 7x, and 7 times a negative 3, that's going to give us negative 21. And now I can combine like terms in my numerator. So I would have 7x, and then 2 minus uh, 21 would be negative 19. And that's our answer for, for that question, and that's uh, our last example for this screencast. So um, don't forget to do your survey at tinyurl. It is short um, this week.